Hold up, check me out. Hold up, the tables and turn. Forget the bridge. It was once just an idea until breaking ground in November of 2016, and now here it is in all its glory. Spectacular SoFi Stadium here in Metropolitan Los Angeles. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Los Angeles Chargers. The first quarter of the season already in the rearview mirror, and off we go in Week 5. EA Sports. No run back here on the opening kickoff as we'll start at the 25. Here's the first carry for Austin Eckler. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. All right, Brandon, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. The last run got six, now second and four. 34 check check A play fake, and now Herbert to throw. Finds the open man. It's Mike Williams. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, LA. Mike Williams, his second touchdown on the season. And the Chargers on just two plays have taken the lead. Extra point good by Hopkins. And it's now a 7 nothing game. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. First and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Mayfield off the play fake. He's going to air one out. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Almost feels like anything you can do, we're going to try and match or do better. We've already seen one touchdown pass from the opposition. They tried to equal it on that throw. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the gun, Mayfield. Looking for Landry, and it's intercepted. Derwin James with a pick, and they can't bring him down. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. What a start defensively. I mean, your offense goes out, gets the touchdown, and then you get the interception. Just perfect. How about the discipline that they showed on defense? Because after the offense scored to go up 7-zip, you would think they might be a little extra aggressive trying to get back at them. Instead, they read their keys well. When they took the shot downfield, they were more than prepared for that one.
Running on first down, Eckler. A gain of three, second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seventh. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Justin Herbert looking to pass. That'll be complete to Cook. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Someone sharp in this game. He had a touchdown pass in the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. On the give, this is Eckler. And he takes it in for a charger touchdown. Austin Eckler, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Chargers have taken a 13-0 first quarter lead. Now it's Hopkins to add the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. drive about to get started and following the interception we'll see what they can put together on this drive I hear my old college coach right now he always used to tell us before every game the team making the fewest mistakes will win but they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game coaches that's all they talk about turnovers right minimizing those and maximizing opportunities Here's second and ten. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. To the right side, and he's got Landry complete. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. And CD, defensively, you're going against a hot quarterback coming off a three-touchdown game in their victory a week ago. But what's the big key for them to try to slow him down? You ask all the tough questions, don't you, partner? Because with this guy, if you blitz him, he takes advantage of that man coverage and burns you. But if you bring down those extra DBs, he sits back there and does what he wants. To me, it's going to be those DBs. When they catch the ball, big-time tackles really put it on those receivers. That right there, a good sign for a team that's had trouble converting third down so far this year. They're in the bottom five in the NFL, but they come through there. Yeah, and I bet if we put our guy Marvin on the case and say, Marvin, tell us where they rank on third and what, right? I bet they're in the top five in the league on third and five, third and six, third and seven or more, because that's how you end up not converting. Just too much yardage to pick up on third down. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. Oh, 
Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. He was well over 100 yards last week. He told us this week, a little ambitious, that he wants to hit that 200 mark. We'll see. Makes sense, though, doesn't it? Have we ever run into a running back that had a great game the week before that didn't think that's just going to naturally continue? Just make sure you feed me the football. And that's what they're all about. Continuity, rhythm, number of carries. Just keep giving it to him. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. When you're down early, how do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Chubb will get the call, running left. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. A give running right is Chubb. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now Chubb running right. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. 61 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Team nothing to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll run with Chubb. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard that time. Second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Chubb. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Yeah. 
to the end zone, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. And his kick is good. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx him. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. to get going. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Second and ten. The handoff, it's Eckler. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And yeah, boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Here's Ty Long now to punt this one away. Taken in at the 22. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. The Browns drive about to get started. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Chubb. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. To throw Mayfield. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 43. Jarvis Landry now in his fourth year with Cleveland. A five-time pro bowler. No one plays harder in the league, and he's only missed one game in seven years. He does what he always does, makes a nice catch there. 
This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Throwing Mayfield. And he gets it to his running back, Nick Chubb. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. I think you'd have to say Nick Chubb, pound for pound, one of the most powerful runners in the NFL. He proved it there. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. Things in score. Chargers 14. Browns 10. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. No return there for Harris, and the drive will begin at the 25. Charger drive about to get going. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Brings up second and 12 at the 23-yard line. Play fake to Eckler. It's Herbert. He's going to fire this thing deep right sideline. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and get the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side. And all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. He's going to go up top again. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. Shoves him aside near the 35. The CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Following the interception, Mayfield. That's going to be caught. Touchdown, Browns. All right out of him, Peoples-Jones. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns have taken the lead. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. It's good, and they'll take a 17-14 lead. Makes the score from 17. Chargers, 14. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. Charger drive about to get going. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here.
So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. This is a counter play, Eckler, and not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. Second and 10 at the 40-yard line. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Sione Taki Taki. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise. They're in the dime. Out of the gun, Herbert. Oh, he's going to go for it all. And this will be caught in the end zone for the Chargers touchdown. For Justin Herbert. We saw the big arm in his days at Oregon, of course. Saw it even more in his rookie season with the Chargers. And if anything, it appears to just continue to get stronger. And that is absolutely demoralizing for a defense because you've got the offense on the ropes. It's third down. You're trying to get off the field and then wham. You have a letdown in the secondary, and you give up a big one. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. The Browns drive about to get started. And now with still more than a minute to go in what's been a tight game, you figure we'll try to see them move the ball downfield. And remember, they get the kickoff to start the second half, so this is a golden opportunity. Oh, he sheds himself free. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. A big play there on the catch and run. As a general manager, you're counting on your first and second round draft picks to have a big-time impact on your team. But where you make your bones... Browns three through seven. If you can find a few diamonds in the rough there, develop them, then you've got something going, and we're seeing one right here. Yeah, plays like that lead me to believe that they found a diamond in the rough. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. From the red zone now, Mayfield. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The sack by big number 98, Linval Joseph. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second in a country mile. Now a timeout called for by the defense as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Now this one from about two counties over after the sack. They come up on a second and very long. Five, six, 
Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And he's going to have the hook up to Schwartz. A big gain there after going backwards, and that'll lead to a third down. Mayfield now. Flush to his right. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Anthony Schwartz in the final seconds of the first half. And once again, the Browns are back in front. McLaughlin for the extra point. And that one gives him a three-point lead. Makes the score Browns 24, Chargers 21. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. going to run it here up the middle pushing his way through and he gets this one just shy of the 40 they'll mark him down at the 39 so we've reached halftime in a wild first half we'll take a minute to catch our breath as we are off to orlando now to check in with jonathan coachman at our ea sports halftime report coach Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Drive about to get started. The third quarter starts with a run by Chubb. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground honed in on it and stopped him. Mucked that down for a win in the defense's column. Second down, here's Chubb again. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. 85 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Chubb on the counter. He'll be dropped shy of the 40 despite powering through the tackle. Tackle made there by the safety, Derwin James. Not a lot of running room there, not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. They go with Chubb on second down and shedding through the tackle. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A big pick up there on the run. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. A give. This is Chubb. Powerful running. He's got the first down inside the 10. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. 
Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. No return there for Harris, and the drive will begin at the 25. The Charger drive about to get going, and their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that leads you into bigger errors. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. A shotgun snap for Herbert. Herbert has it knocked free. And this is picked up by the Browns. And they take over. They'll set up shot at the 46-yard line. But we know he's got the speed to get downfield, Charles, but there's the negative side, a little loose with the football that time. And that's normal, especially when you have his type of talents because you feel like you're into the open field and maybe you don't feel the people who are around you are closing in. All quarterbacks have to do extra ball security drills with the way the game's played now because defenses, they attack the football as much as they attack the runner. A good run by Chubb on first down as he'll get about six yards there. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had his problems trying to keep him contained. Second and four. Now Mayfield. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Handoff comes to Chubb, stays on his feet, and he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Here's Mayfield. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, those two have hooked up for a touchdown once already in this game, that time unable to find the completion. Yeah, it just appeared they wanted to get him out into open space and try and get him the football. As you mentioned, unable to connect. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Mayfield. Now he's got it. Touchdown. David Njoku, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns add on to their lead. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, 
This guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving him up. Four touchdown passes, carving him up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Herbert and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll hand off here to Eckler, and he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. It's Eckler again. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Back to throw here, Herbert. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Sione Taki Taki. Leading the surge there as he drops him for a loss of six. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's going to go down. He backed up into the end zone, and this is going to wind up a safety. And you know, the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. The Browns drive about to get started. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Mayfield to throw it. Eluding the pressure right. He's going to dump this off to his running back, Hunt. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an error in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, we talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. If they continue to throw these safe passes, who can blame them? Chubb will have the first down and much more. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb. 
His third touchdown of the game, his eighth on the year. And the Browns are closing in on a 4 and one start as they extend their fourth quarter lead. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that will bump the lead up to 26. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Here comes Harris out of the end zone. Oh, a good return up past the 30. Past midfield. Still going. And he will score. Touchdown, Chargers. It's been a back and forth game. A lot of points on the board. And that return right there kind of indicative of how this thing's gone. Yeah, you've seen both teams go at it. And as you just pointed out, both of them have found the end zone. But just like in boxing, you know the blow that hurts the most? The one you didn't see coming. And that often is the case when it comes in special teams. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And this one has gone pretty well to form. They've come in, had little problem thus far, and now they'll try to polish things off in the fourth. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Mayfield on play action. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And all. Five. A big play that time for Cleveland. No let up in this passing game. They've been a well-oiled machine throughout. And I actually saw a few guys on the sidelines at the end of the third quarter doing the old hold up four fingers college sign, meaning the fourth quarter is ours. And they certainly weren't kidding. Chubb. Give them maybe a yard, quite the opposite from the previous big gainer. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And that is taken in by Njoku. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Now that's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? Maybe worse than the loss of yardage, they also lose the down. So now it's third and long. Mayfield looks to throw. Looking for Landry, and it's intercepted. It's Chris Harris with a pick. And the Chargers are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. Charles, whatever's going on between his ears right now, it's just not completely calculated correctly. Seven picks between last week and this week after that one. And they always say the most important part of a player is those six inches between the ears. But right now, it's all those interceptions that are going on. So whoever his trusted confidant is on the sidelines, I don't know if it's the offense coordinator, the quarterback's coach, maybe the backup quarterback, that's who he needs to get with now and get himself calm. And yeah, they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 56 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. First down, and they stick with Eckler. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough at run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. My rifle's one, and that's going to be intercepted. And oh, he coughed it up. And I think they are going to get this one back. Well, that would have been something. Double turnovers. But instead, they'll keep the possession on the INT. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. 
but it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the yeah, fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. They're still throwing the football here, and obviously the incompletion stops the clock. That's a bad thing. It feels to me like they're just keeping them honest on defense because you know they're going to stack the line of scrimmage to try and stop any type of a running play. Short little passes may work in exchange of running plays. Keep the clock moving, keep them moving. Yeah, I guess you're right. If they can get some first downs, just as good as running the football. They'll try and wind down some clock with Chubb. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And Mayfield again with the interception. His third. Picked off at the 30. And the return stops just a few yards shy of midfield. They'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line. Wow, between last week and this week, that's now eight interceptions. Five a week ago, now three here. But he is so lucky that one of the defense coordinators I played for, a man named Ken Donahue, is not there right now. Because he saw that happen during his coaching career. And he grabbed a quarterback in the midst of a streak like this and said, tell you what, son, why don't you throw it to the defensive guys and let's see if our receivers can intercept it. <laughs> He's got to figure something out because the current formula is not working. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. They'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. On first and 10, Herbert. And this is caught at the 8. And the Chargers are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the 8-yard line. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Once more, here's Eckler. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Chargers. Austin Eckler with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Chargers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Hopkins with the extra point, and they're able to cut this deficit down to 12. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. This will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And he'll be out of bounds across the 25. drive about to get started and a few kneel downs should just about do it now defensively they do have all three timeouts but very little reason to use them at this point now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete that ball was tipped in the air and while it ultimately fell incomplete it caused a few anxious moments for the guy slinging it who's had quite a day he knows how to get it into the end zone he's throwing it really really well and maybe Lady Luck is on his side because he avoided his first interception of the contest. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking.
An extra cornerback now in the game for the Chargers here on third. They go play action. Mayfield. Trying to lay one up deep. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. The Charger drive about to get going. This is just an exercise in futility. Do you, do you even bother running a play here offensively? I wouldn't because now... And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Malik McDowell. Stopping in. Yeah. 